Good morning. Thank you for joining us. As always, we thank and praise God for his many wonderful blessings, and we certainly thank God for you allowing us to come into your homes and share with you from his holy word. I am Dr. McLeod, along with Dr. Talton Dess, and we have our special guest on today, the Reverend George Level from New Prospect Missionary Baptist Church is with us today. So we thank and praise God for him as well. But as always, we're going to give you an opportunity to get your Bible, Sunday school book, pen and paper, and we'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us. Before we go into our study period on this morning, we're going to invoke God's blessings upon us. Dr. Daz, would you pray for us, please? Father, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, O oh God. Again, we appreciate this day, O oh God, and we pray that you'll have your way. Use us for your glory and honor, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, we thank God for all things. We certainly thank God for you allowing us to come into your homes and sharing with you from his holy word. And we're going to be studying out of the book of Leviticus again on this morning. And we're going to be studying from the 22nd chapter, verses 17 through 25, and also verses 31 through 33. Topic on this morning is acceptable offering, and an acceptable offering. And I know that yours might read a little different, but as always, we encourage you to continue to study out of the material that you're comfortable with. We know God is going to bless us to come to that expected end. That's right. Doc, how does yours read? Acceptable offerings. Okay, and yours right too. Choosing the right gift. All right. Choosing the right gift, acceptable offerings, and whatever yours may read, we know God is going to bless us again. We thank God for all things, and certainly thank God for our guests being with us on this morning. Amen. We're with George Livers, mm -hmm. New Prospect Missionary Baptist Church. Dr. Dancer, how do you feel about this? Well, <coughs> it is uh, incomparable to, to know that, that uh, it uh, nothing given, nothing received. <laughs> You don't put anything into it, you can't get anything out of it. <laughs> That's true. That is true. So we have to uh, accept that we have a part to play in God's plan, in God's purpose. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we act in accordance with the role that God has given us, we do as God would have us to do. Mm -hmm. It always comes out to 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 uh, the success of God's plan. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and and I think that this is well stated because when we when we do nowadays, we we have a tendency of wanting to do the way we want to do it, not according mm -hmm. to the will of God and not according to the plan of God. And many times we find ourselves shipwrecked or running into a brick wall because we have decided to take matters into our own hands and do what we want to do mm -hmm. and, and not do what God has instructed us to do or the way he instructed us to do it. And we miss our blessings or we lose our blessings or we don't receive uh, the blessing that we think we should have received because we did what it is that we did. Uh, yeah. not realizing that we did not do things according to the way God purposed for it to be done or according to his will. But but do we, do we really realize that, though? <laughs> I don't think so. I, 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 I don't think so. I, I think the enemy has has fooled us. He has deceived us. Uh, he he, he gives us that. Yeah. Our, 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 our minds. Exactly. To, to uh, what God expects and requires of us. You know, yes. sometimes yes. we can put, we people, humans, you know, we can put out certain instructions or make certain rules and regulations and when mm -hmm. People don't comply as opposed to holding their feet to the fire. Mm -hmm. So you're going to do this way, we begin to compromise. Yes. But God's yes. not going to compromise. No, he never will. He never yeah. will. And and we take on that old attitude about the, that'll do. You know, yeah. we get that old that'll do attitude. Right. You know, and, and God don't need my money or God don't need this, God don't need that. And that's just exactly what the enemy wants us to do. Right. But George, how do you feel about that? Well, I, guess I think we should uh, realize who God is. And, okay. And uh, when we they talk about acceptable sacrifice, the choosing the right gift, mm -hmm. and then this lesson let us know not only who God is, but who we are. Mm -hmm. We're okay. God's people. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, there's a one scripture said obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you're going to be, if you're going to follow God, you, uh, if God's your father, you're going to be obedient to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, one scripture in there, I think it was Isaiah said, These people are honored me with, with what they allow, with their, their heart is far from mm -hmm. me. Yeah. So, your gift is you. Mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and the Lord says, You love me, you will. Mm 
Mm-hmm. You know, you, you said something there. Your, your gift to God is you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do we do we do we recognize that? I mean, you know, we're, we're told <laughs> we're told to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, exactly, holding exactly. acceptable unto God, and be not conformed to the world, be transformed by the renewing of our minds. But do we recognize what that gift, the gift that God requires from us or of us, is really us? I don't think we do, <laughs> Doctor Des. I, again, I I believe that we feel that. You got to be glad that I'm doing whatever I'm doing. I, you know, I think we take that attitude with each other. Yeah, among people, yeah. we do take that attitude. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and uh, <laughs> even with God, you know, we we figure well, I give God His day on Sundays. I give God His day on whatever day we choose to worship. You know, uh, I, I'm honoring the Sabbath day, whatever case may be, and I can do what I want to do the rest of the week. And and I do think that we have that that that, that tendency to feel that way. Mm-hmm. I don't think that we even with the argument that Paul put forth, you know, he, he said, "I beseech you by the mercies of God." God. Mm-hmm. Uh, if if we stop and think about the blessings that we have received from God <laughs> and the mercies that God has shown us, I don't think it would be too much of a problem for us to actually realize that we need to be presenting ourselves a living sacrifice. Right. I I think that if we would just stop for a moment and realize that. Even though you might take it for granted that the sun is shining, you know, we need to stop and realize, hey, it's because of God's mercy that we woke up this morning to even see that sun shining. So the things that we're taking for granted, I I think we need to stop and recognize what God is doing in our lives a little bit more than what we're doing. But, um, you know, there was an old saying that I'm sure all of us have heard, you don't give anything that you wouldn't want yourself. That's right. Right. That's just a saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) It's just an idiot. That's all that is. It sounds good. (laughs) <laughs> but you got to take that to heart. Exactly. <laughs> and practice that. <laughs> that is true. And I don't think we do that. And, and, and we've seen that since the beginning of time with Cain and Abel. You, you know, he just right. he went and then gave him anything. You know, just, it didn't right. matter. You know. Right. I gave and, you something, so yeah, accept it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Be glad I gave you this. You know? Right. And uh, when uh, the Lord wasn't pleased with it, then he gets upset and he goes out and kills his brother. And, and I think we do the same thing. You know, we might not commit physically murder, but, but uh, we do a With character. With that tongue. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that tongue <laughs> and that character assassination. Won't give your character, your reputation. Yes, exactly. Exactly. They're going to damage your ministry. They're going to do something. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. So we talk about acceptable offerings, which lets me know also that there are some offerings that are not acceptable. That's right. You know, so again, we got to do things the way God has uh, expected us to do it, has commanded us to do it. And as the, uh, Reverend Levin has already said, you know, obedience is better than second place. <laughs> That's right. You know. All right. Uh, again, we're studying from the 22nd chapter of the book of Leviticus, verses 17 through 25, and also verses 31 through 33. Dr. Das, would you read for us, please? Verse 17. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons, to all the children of Israel, and say unto them, Whatsoever he be of the house of Israel, of the strangers in Israel that will offer his oblation for all his vows and for all his free will offerings which they will offer unto the Lord for a burnt offering you shall offer at your own will a male without blemish uh, of the beeves and of the sheep and of the goats for whatsoever hath a blemish that shall you not offer for it shall not be acceptable for, from you was going to offer a sacrifice of peace offering unto the Lord to, uh, to accomplish his vow or a free will offering in beeves or sheep. It shall be uh, perfect to be accepted. There shall be no blemish therein, blind or broken or maimed or having a wind or scurvy or scabbed. You shall not offer these unto the Lord, nor make an offering by fire of them up on the altar unto the Lord. Either a bullock or a lamb that hath anything superfluous by lacking in his parts, that mayest thou offer for a free will offering, but not for a vow, it shall not be accepted. Mm-hmm. You shall not offer to the Lord that which is bruised, or crushed, or broken, or cut. Neither shall ye make any offering thereof in your land. Neither from a stranger's hand, nor shall ye offer the bread of your God of any of these, because their corruption is in them, and blemish be in them, they shall not be accepted of you. Mm-hmm. Verse 31, Therefore shall ye keep my commandments and do them. I am the Lord. Neither shall ye profane my holy name. But I will be hallowed among the children of Israel. I am the Lord, which hallowed you. That brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. In this we see that there are some offerings that has to be perfect. Depending on what you offer it for. Right. And then there are some offerings that can be 
uh, less than perfect. Blemished in some sense, yeah. Right, right, right. Less than perfect. Uh, again, depending on what you what you offer it for. Right. But uh, the thing that we have to keep in mind is that when we are going to offer an offering unto the Lord, it has to be according to His commandments. We we have to maintain the fact that if it is not done according to the will of God, it's not going to be accepted. I was studying not too long ago in the book of Ezekiel, I think it was around the 37th chapter, when the Lord talked about how they had moved uh, his posts and set up their mm -hmm. posts, and how they had moved his threshold mm -hmm. and set up their threshold, and they're wondering why it is that they cannot, <laughs> they're not being blessed. Well, <laughs> they're not being blessed Amen. because they changed <laughs> the pattern of things. They changed the way God wanted things to be done. You cannot move God's commandments out of the way and do what you want to do and expect God to bless you. Right. It's not going to happen. We have to maintain and, and do the will of God the way that God has instructed us to do it. And, uh, you know, even with, with our offering, and this is one of the things that, that people hate to even talk about when we start talking <laughs> about money, but even with your money that you give, if your heart is not right, right. You know, if, if your heart is not in the right place, if if, 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 if it's not cheerfully being done, you're going to miss your blessings. You, you're going to lose your blessings. And and until we realize that, you know, we, we feel that, that God is like us. I'll just throw him anything and, and it's going to be all right. <laughs> it's not going to happen. This is why you're not receiving your blessings. This is why your money is not meeting them. You know, you That's got right. you got more loose ears at the end of the month than you got money. You know. He's not rebuking the devour on your part. You're going to have to start doing things the way God expects it to be done. That's right. When we do it that way, we can expect to be blessed. Well, you know, and, and the key is, as we said before, it's, it's, it's our life. God wants our life. Yes. You know, anything we give God and we haven't given him our life is, is of no value to God anyway. That's true. God values our life. And as it's Paul true. was saying, you know, present your body as a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. holy. Mm -hmm. Not W-H-O-L-L-Y, but H-O-L-Y, yes. holy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which is acceptable to God, and yes. if it's not holy, it's not acceptable it's not by God. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and then in giving anything that we give beyond that, He says we shouldn't give begrudgingly mm -hmm. or of necessity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but cheerfully. Yes. So, like you say, you know, it's not so much in what we give, but the attitude we have in what we give exactly. unto God. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, the attitude we have, if it's not proper, it 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 makes whatever we give void anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, John, what do you take on that? Well. Uh, as I say, that it seems like God is around teaching us as he taught Israel and us mm -hmm. that he is a holy God. Mm -hmm. He's not mm -hmm. just anything. Mm -hmm. He's not just common. God is a holy God, and, and, and God is perfect. Mm -hmm. And he will not accept anything other than perfect. Yes. And yes. Uh, when the Israelites, when they uh, offered an offering, they had to put their hand on that offering. Right. And they was identifying with that offer. Mm -hmm. Now, if you brought up something with blemishes and something like that, mm -hmm. you were identifying that this was this was saying that this is how you you mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. God is not. God is perfect, so He demands that His you be perfect, be perfect, be mm -hmm. holy, for mm -hmm. I am holy. Right, mm -hmm. right. And exactly. God don't have anything else uh, outside of anything perfect or complete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if it had anything in the blemishes in it, but you just you you're not recognizing you're not God, giving God his proper respect okay. and his honor, okay. because God you you are bringing God's name down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know you mentioned something earlier that, that we are are the gift, and and in that regards I realize that uh, you know we were talking about what Paul had mm -hmm. said that we should present our body, right. but also in a different uh, respect of that, we we are what we share. In other words, people right. can look at what mm -hmm. we give and, and, and judge us. Identify us. Right? Yeah, 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 identify yeah. us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's a better word, identify. Mm -hmm. you, you know, if, if we give slowly or give something that is that is not uh, uh, perfect, mm -hmm. then they're going to look at us. This is your character. This is where you are. Right. This is the type of person you are. So what you give actually represents who you are. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly the way you give will definitely represent who you are. And I think we need to stop and think about that as well. Any time that, that, that we are doing anything and not doing it wholeheartedly uh, to the will of God and for the will of God, then I think we have to realize the fact that we are showing others as, as well as God that we are not really committed uh, to what we're doing. Our gift represents us. Or uh, that God has no value in our life. Yes, yes, you know? yes. Or it doesn't have first place in our life at least anyway. Right. Yeah. 
Right. You know, and that's the thing, as you're saying, you know, it, it all, it depends on the heart, the yes. character, the mind that we have when we do what we do. Yes. And we go back to what we were saying before, even with our lesson today, mm -hmm. if you haven't given yourself to God, then anything beyond that is going to be it, it, a strain on you to give yeah. <laughs> yeah. or to participate in. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when you give yourself to God, when you sacrifice yourself wholly and completely to Him, there isn't anything that I have that's more valuable than my walk with God. Exactly. There isn't anything God can ask me to do that's so strenuous, so, so difficult, so hard, mm -hmm. that I won't put forth my best to try and do it that's right. because I've given myself to Him. So that's anything right. left in that is less valuable than me. Mm -hmm. I've given the, the most valuable thing I have, the greatest thing I have is me. So anything less than that really has no, has no, no difficulty. Right. Right. You know, and one of the perfect examples I think of that is the widow mite. You know, she, she only had the, the two mites. Right. But but she gave what she had, you know, and, and that what she had was equal to or and surpassed the abundance that's that others was given. That's right. That's you know, right. because of the abundance of her heart, she gave all. And and we again have to have to realize that it is a, it is according to your heart mm -hmm. what you're doing and how you're giving and if you're not giving from a pure and clean heart, then uh, basically your giving is in vain. You yeah. you cannot expect a return on what you're giving if it's not being sown in the right spirit and the right mind. Right, and you know, the Bible says, "I'm abundant the heart the man speaks." So yes, you know you can you can mix all the words you want to mix. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> well, see your heart's gonna come out too. Long. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. and, and even though it might not come out, God already knows it. That's right, He knows so, it. In there. I mean, yeah, so he, he, who forever. knows the heart? He knows the heart. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> One thing I, I was thinking about how how would I want to receive? How would I want to receive? Right. Would I want to receive something less than the best? Would mm -hmm. I want to receive something that's lame or mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's got uh, some kind of defect or blemishes? Mm -hmm. Is that what I want to see? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I have to I look and see, oh, uh, look at the person that I'm giving this gift. Right. Mm -hmm. Someone that I love with all my heart. Mm -hmm. The one that woke me up this morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The one that gave me his best. Mm -hmm. Now, how do I want to give this this mm -hmm. person? How yeah. do I want to give God? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. The greatest <laughs> yeah. person on the earth. The great, greatest person uh, uh, that I can think of. That's Not right. on the earth, but... In heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. and, and that gives you something to think about. You know, you, when you when you think about your relationship, and this is what we always want to do, is, is always maintain a personal relationship. We can study about the children of Israel, and we can study about what God did for Daniel, Hebrew boys, and whatever the case may mm -hmm. be, but we need to main, maintain a personal relationship with the Lord, and, and we need to nurture that relationship, you know, and just like we all have loved ones and we want to give them a present we want to give them the best right we don't want to give them something that uh they would not be impressed with That's right. and certainly don't want to give them something that we would not accept and be impressed with ourselves and when you think about god and who he is the holy god that he right. is you know i mean the, the, the value of what we're giving now uh in our relationship to god can never surpass us giving ourselves That's right our lives and our obedience and our allegiance unto him and this is what he requires this is what he wants if we will give ourselves unto him then he can use us mm -hmm. uh, to portray himself to a dying world That's he right. can show a dying world that he is real by using us you know but we got to present ourselves in a manner in which he can get the praise the glory and the honor and if we do that then he can use us and then we can be blessed you know and then if he's already set the example Yes. The pattern is yes. already there. God gave yes. His best, mm -hmm. His absolute best to us, and we didn't deserve it. I mean, you oh know, no, we no. can never say, "Well, I deserve that," mm -hmm. you know, so I can do anything I want. No, we didn't deserve any of that. So, mm -hmm. setting the pattern, giving the best, giving you all, we should do the same thing and giving ourselves back to God. Yes. And yes. when we don't do that, when we come short of that, that there's a reason for us coming short. What is that reason? Uh, as was said before, do we not love God with all of our heart? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because I really love you, there's nothing I have that's so valuable, exactly. I can't share it with you. Exactly, all the self-centeredness that we have, and, right. you know, the self-righteousness, you know, it, it, it becomes more in vain when we actually stop and think about who it is that we're talking about. That's right. When we're talking right. about the God of our salvation, you know. And like you pointed out, the fact that he gave his all. And um, his all. I think Paul may mention that in, in uh, I think it was Corinthians, 
when he said that God had given his all and not at the time, but one time God winked at the ignorance of man. That's right, that's right. But now <laughs> he's, he's requiring us to give our all as he's given his all. So we can't just go before the Lord haphazardly and say, well, I'm going to do this and this and this and go on. That's right. No, we, we need to make sure that what we're doing pleases God and pleases God on every level. Yeah, and the thing is, too, what God requires of us now is not the, the sheep or the bullocks or the beeves that we're right. talking about the rest right. of the day, but mm -hmm. uh, our lives. Yes. It's us yes. that he requires. We're the sacrifice now. Mm -hmm. And if he wouldn't accept a blemish sacrifice mm -hmm. then, yes. He's not going to accept only sacrifice now. Yes. We come to God and we don't come with all, giving all of our mind, our heart, our strength, our everything. Mm -hmm. There's a blemish there someplace. Yes, yes. And th it makes it therefore unaccepted right. by God. And, and and we cannot go to him with the I can't help it and I was born this way and it ain't right. my fault. <laughs> and I inherited this, that, and other. No, you, you might want well to get that out of your book. That's right. Not. <laughs> because he made it possible for you to be born again. You're a new creature in Christ, you know, so the all that I can't help it, that's, that's gone. Forget about that. No, <laughs> no. This verse 19 in our lesson says here, you shall offer at your own will. Yes. At your own will. Yes, exactly. You know, you, 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 you've got to desire this. You've got to want this. You've yes. got to participate in this. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm not I'm not going around, you know, demanding that you do anything. Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. got to, to uh, buy into this, participate in this by of your own choosing, of your That's own right. will to give me right. what I'm asking of here, a man without blemish, of beeves, of the sheep, mm -hmm. of the goats, whatever it is, you know, bring me mm -hmm. your best. Mm -hmm. Now we realize that we're not under the law now and, and, and we want to make sure that we clarify that. We know we're not under the law, but these are an example for us. As we've already stated earlier, we might not be given these particular offerings, but we want to give ourselves and we want to make sure that we understand that even during the days of old, God required perfection. That's right. And, That's right. and he requires nothing less, uh, nothing less now uh, from us. And the fact that he's given of his son, he's also given of us an, an opportunity to be able to present ourselves mm -hmm. holy and, and spotless and without blemish or without blame. If we will accept what God has done for us and what God wants to do for us, and we can also understand the fact that it's not so much as how much you have to give, but just give what God has blessed you to right. give. That's right. You know, it's, it's, you, you, sometimes we take the attitude, well, I don't have, I can't give like sister so-and-so, or, <laughs> or I can't give like brother so-and-so, so I'm going to just hold my little bit in my pocket. No, 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 no. God knows what you have. God provided for you to do what he, what he wants you to do. So he does not expect you to be like uh, the, your neighbor Jones. That's right. You know, it, it, God <laughs> expects you to do what he, what he wants you to do. What he has blessed you with according to your blessings. Amen. And there again, with, with that attitude that I'm doing this, not because um, Joe did this, or not because Frank did this, not because I'm trying to do better than George does this, yes. but I'm doing this because I want to do it. Yes. I want to be a blessing. I want to be used of God. I want to bring glory down to Him. So it's mm -hmm. my decision to do it for those reasons because I mm -hmm. want to be a blessing to God, not because of what someone else has done. Right. I don't want to emulate them or try to better them. This is what I, God's given me to do. This is what I have to give. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give my best and all yes. to Him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Acceptable offering. Mm -hmm. Are you coming, Brother George? Yeah, acceptable offering. Choosing the right offering. Mm -hmm. Another thing I can't say that. Uh, I was thinking, my gift is really God's gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He gave it to me. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then if I bring anything lesser than, lesser than uh, uh, good or perfect, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be lying because God already given me. He gave me the best gift to give mm -hmm. to Him. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, so if I, I'll really be stealing. Well, that's true. Yep. Man. <laughs> <laughs> because God already, God already knows what I got. <laughs> and if I don't give the best and I, I hold back, so what about I'm being selfish? That's right. That's right. You yeah. lied and stole. Yeah. <laughs> God already knows. Yeah. God already know the best that I got. That's yeah. right. And when I yeah. when I come to him, he know I'm like Cain. He know that's not the best that I can do. That's right. That's right. And God, if I'm singing, if I'm mm -hmm. preaching, if I'm teaching. Or whatever, if I, I'm just, I'm just selfish, uh, holding back, might be lazy. He mm -hmm. he know that I can I can do better. Do better, right? Yeah. Yeah. God does not expect us to do more than we're capable of doing. Amen. That's but He does expect us to do 
Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne knows he's giving them to us yeah, too, dude. Okay, dude. And, and, and you know, it would be good if people understand that because many times people talk about uh, their job or their money is on my paycheck and and uh, I prepared myself. I went to school. I did this and I did That's this right. in order to do this, this, and the other. <laughs> and, and, and we need to stop and realize that everything that you have accomplished, you accomplished because of the grace of God. It's not so much that you're so important or so intelligent that you were able to do this, or you were so fortunate uh, to go to school and get an education in order for you to do what you're doing. Everything that you're doing, everything that came together for you to do what you're doing, God bless you to, in order for it to be done. So don't think that what you have belongs to you. <laughs> everything that you have belongs to God. Yeah, God Inclu is. Yeah, including your money, your job, your life, your, your breath, so everything belongs to the Lord. And the sooner we realize that, I think the better off we'll be, Dr. Jesus. You know, and, and there again, too, as you're saying, even knowing this, accepting this, and knowing this, God is still not demanding anything from us. No. He's not demanding. No. He gave you I, choice. Right. I gave you this, so now I expect you to give You better give this back to me. <laughs> I've given it to you, and I'm asking you to give back to me. Yeah. And the more you give back to me, the more I'm going to give unto you. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a cycle that, that God uh, sets in motion. And, and if, if it's not working, it's not on God's part, it's on our part. Exactly. Well, the judge was saying a while ago, if I'm holding back something, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm retaining something. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not giving my best. Yes. You know, and God knows I'm not. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, That's right. How why then should I continue to expect God to give me his best uh -huh. if I'm skimming off the top before I get back to him? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you talk about, go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. And you said a minute ago that, uh, uh, you know, we. I think God is. He's showing us Himself and said, "Be like me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be like me." Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we. It's another. It's a scripture in there, and I think it's in the Beatitudes in the fifth chapter of uh, Matthew. Mm -hmm. Says, uh, "You are the salt of the earth." Mm -hmm. Another said, "You are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, let your light, let your the light, light shine, shine." And. Uh, mm -hmm. That, uh, men men may to be see your good works and glorify mm -hmm. your heavenly father in heaven. Mm -hmm. When we when we do our best, we let we we show in God. That's just right. Like, just like the, just like the Lord, he, he said Peter. Uh, I think it was Thomas said, "Show us the Father." That's right. So I, the Lord mm -hmm. said, "I've been with you so long, and yet you have not seen me." <laughs> said, "If you see me, you see the Father." That's right. Me and my Father one. So when when we do our best and we. Uh, we we showing the Lord Savior Jesus Christ. That's right. Mm -hmm. See, That's when right. we do our best, we manifest in Him. If we are not doing our best, we we'll bring, we'll bring shame. We bring shame when we bring shame on His name, and we are we are not manifesting in, in Christ because Christ Christ uh, give His all. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. As always, we're running out of time, and God has certainly blessed us. But we're going to give you an opportunity to get your unsaved loved one. Tell them to come on your TV. Doctor Dancer got something you want to tell them. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us. Dr. Dance, if you will. As we said on morning, God has given us his best and that he gave us Jesus yes. as a sufficient sacrifice for all of our sins. Now, he's asking us to give back to him. He's asking us to give our lives unto him. Mm -hmm. He's not so much concerned about anything outside of our life until we give our life to him. And that's the easiest thing in this world to do. It doesn't cost us anything. There's no labor involved in it. Everything that Every cost attached to it, Jesus paid that cost for us. Yes. So all we need to do today, coming up on this Christmas season, Jesus is the reason for the season. He came into this world for one reason, to die in our place. Amen. To pay the, pen, to pay the penalty for our sins and bring us back into a right relationship with the Father. So I encourage you this season, this Christmas season, to think about what we're saying, all that you've seen and heard on today, and surrender your life to Jesus. It doesn't matter what you've done up to this point. Uh, drugs, alcohol, some illicit sexual affair, whatever it may be. God's not pleased with that, but he can and will forgive all of that. If you just come now and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins Amen. and accept me. Bring me into a right relationship with you through my faith in Christ Jesus. I believe that he is your son, that he paid for my sins, and I'm asking you to save me now. It's just that simple. If you do that, he'll receive you. And once you've done that, again, get involved in a Bible-believing and a Bible-teaching church. So you can grow in your walk with God and know these things that we talk about of what God expects of us, how we can get back to God, how we can grow in Him. God bless you. God bless you. 
And as always, it is our prayer, our wish, our desire that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. God bless you on this morning. God bless you.